Uh, hey there, everybody. This is Tynan Sylvester. Uh, I'm the developer of Room World, and uh, we just put out uh, Alpha 1 of the game, and I thought I would just make a little video here to show you some of the new hotness, uh, which we've been working on for the last uh, couple months. Um, so to start with, uh, I mean, it's been a lot of infrastructure stuff. Um, I really want to kind of get the game to a, s a really solid foundation before we start going crazy with with factions and archaeology and like installing extra organs in people and, and all that 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 like wild world gen stuff. Um, so back in the day, um, I was just trying to get the game out like as fast as possible, um, just to like see if it would work. And long, long ago, um, I originally did the the dwarf fortress style. Um, system where everything is stored on the map and if your guys mine something they have to put it in a, like a pile somewhere and then they can take uh, that metal and build something out of it but it was like super complicated and it was just destroying destroying the the schedule of the game so I eventually just just took it out and just did sort of a Starcraft style uh, thing where you just had this sort of magical resources that your guys would would store sort of in the sky but now that's all changed we actually did stockpiling this time around uh, and here I will show it to you uh, it's pretty simple conceptually. It's just you know you got these stockpiles and you can set where your guys are going to keep certain amounts of uh, or certain kinds of things. Um, you can change what they're called. Uh, let's call it metal. And um, you can configure what goes in there. This interface was pretty pretty fun to make. Um, so you got your categories which you can turn off entirely. So I can be like you know just weapons. Um, but if you want to be specific, a lot of people want to like sell all their cheap weapons, right? So you would make a an outdoor stockpile where you're selling stuff uh, and just put like pistols and frag grenades and Molotov, for example, and, and keep everything else. Um, and you know, you got your debris, you got your resources, and it's all subcategorized. And this is all set up to be expandable. Like currently, there's just one kind of raw food, but you know, in the future, especially with modding, there could be dozens in there. So um, You'll be able to set up categories and such to, to make that work. Uh, we've also got priorities on these bad boys. So, you know, if you have a couple stockpiles and you want to have your colonists prefer keeping one full for whatever reason, and there's lots of reasons to do so, um, you can set the priority to whatever you want, and uh, they will stock the higher priority uh, stockpiles first. Um, something else that that sort of affected everything back back when the the uh, the stockpile system was just this magical reservoir in the sky like StarCraft 2. A lot of stuff just sort of magically happened. Like you would mine this stuff and then you could sell it and you'd sell it to these space traders and it would just go away, you know? Uh, but now that, that didn't really make any sense. Like if you could do that now, you could just designate a stockpile because they're free. They're just they're just AI hints and what where to store things. Uh, you know, if you found found a like a pile of uh, metal out here, you could just designate a stockpile here and sell it. So it wouldn't make any sense. Um, so now you actually have to build these launch pads. Those cost some metal. You put a stockpile on top of them. You store stuff on the stockpile. And then when the cr trader comes by, you can you can talk to him and uh, say, look, though, this is the stuff you're going to buy. Um, and you can't just sell anything on the map. Um, so yeah, that's stockpiling. It also made you know the, the, the food system change, because before we had these nutrient paste dispensers, and they would just you know, convert your raw food into nutritious paste meals, but um, they would just take the food from nowhere. So um, now they actually have to draw from these little hoppers beside them. And the hoppers are actually, uh, they use the same code as the storage zones, um, the stockpiles. And they have their own storage settings. They're restricted to taking certain kinds of food and they're, they default to importance. So, um, but your guys will store food in there. And really soon, I hope to be able to store like different kinds of food, like uh, you know, dead, dead things, dead people, etc. Because uh, you know, you got a lot of dead raiders, and people are always complaining about, um, you know, what do I do with these huge catacombs filled with raiders? Um, you know, eat them. <laughs> Why not? The nutrient paste dispenser will sanitize everything, and the colonists might not mind too much, depending on their personality. But you know, that's all stuff that, that I really want to do in the future. Mm. Um, and you know the the uh, equipment racks have the same storage settings as well, and that shows up in a couple other places. Um, so that's that's stockpiling. Uh, so yeah, next I just want to direct your attention to um, 
the apparel that these guys are wearing. Here, let's grab me here. Uh, I seem to be wearing, I'm this swarthy dude with a uh, kind of a rocker hairdo and this, this gray jacket on. Zeph over here uh, is uh, completely naked. Uh, Furious seems to be packing. He's a little wounded, but he's also got a flak vest on and this um, exciting uh, blonde mohawk. Weber, let's get you out of bed. What are you wearing, Weber? And Weber has this like green top knot thing. So, uh, you know, if you've been following Ludion.com, you know that uh, we had this this awesome artist uh, named uh, Rapunzel who also worked on Nomoria and Starbound, uh, doing a pass on the character art here, which has been quite a uh, quite a little challenge. I mean, they're they're very simple pieces in the end, but I think achieving that simplicity has been has been really uh, interesting because it's not just it's not just about making them look beautiful um, it's a whole different design challenge where you gotta communicate stuff about the character and what they're doing and, and do this all in a very small budget of small amounts of content that can be can be modded easily um, in a tiny space on the screen um, and uh, you know I think that's that's worked out pretty well so we have a, a lot of different pieces of, of clothing we have five different body types um, see Weber is the Hulk Furious and Tynan are sort of just the standard male Zeph is the uh, uh, the thin one, and uh, let's see if we can get some others. Um, yeah, all right. So there's a, there's a ton more more characters. Um, let's get even more. I want to I want to show off some of the more unusual pieces of clothing. So yeah, so there's Sadako. She's you know she's got the pink shirt, dark eyes, rocking this uh, tan. Um, uh, sort of, uh, you know, Western style duster, uh, and we even have like power armor and stuff like that in the game. So um, it's pretty, it's pretty varied. The the colors are all varied and randomized within certain parameters. The hairdos go on randomly. Um, so you know, we hope to characterize people uh, by what they're wearing, uh, and uh, you know, even have people, uh, um, you know, you be able to control what your colonists wear to some degree. So if you want to set up an all pink Afro colony. You know, go go right ahead. I'm sort of looking looking forward to seeing what what people are going to do with that. Um, uh, but right now, everything is just randomized. So you know, this is something still in development. But the the basic character graphics um, are are in. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, the new uh, the new character graphics. Um, Another fun thing that's been added is um, this guy, which I'm sure you've been furious about me just sitting with this tutor message up. But the uh, the new adaptive tutor is in, uh, and the way this works is it's actually it's a lot smarter than the old one. I, I used to watch play tests, and uh, you know the tutor would show you, you know someone would start the game and they start moving the camera around and stuff like that and looking at things, and uh, the tutor would be like to move the camera do X. Uh, which was just like the most obtuse thing I can imagine and stupid in pretty much any way you can imagine it. Um, so uh, now we, we came up with a, or, uh, this, this new adaptive tutor and the way this works is it watches, it watches what's going on in the game, watches everything you're doing and tries to keep this, uh, basically this database of everything that it thinks you know, like every concept it, it's sort of worked out that you understand and which ones you don't and its degree of certainty be at certainty about what you understand. So um, here's actually just the debug output of that. Um, so in this case, in my case, the tutor uh, knows that I understand most of, uh, most of the concepts in the game, um, but rescuing, it's, my knowledge is set at zero. Building launch pad, uh, I think I've done it. Um, so my knowledge is, is set to a decent level, but not maximum. And then putting stockpiles on launch pads, my, I have no knowledge in yet. Um, and what it does is it, it, it tracks your knowledge in each of these things by watching what you do. So if you start the game off and you move your camera around a little bit, um, you know, it's, you're know you going to see the knowledge in your camera go up and up. And th this is all happening invisibly in the background. Um, and then it tries to figure out a need versus like how much you need to know each thing. So each concept has a different natural priority assigned to it. Um, so you know, moving the camera is more important than opening the wiki or something like that. Um, 
And then uh, there's also temporary needs where, like, you know, if your colonist has just been shot and they're laying bleeding there on the ground, then, then you really need to know that there's a system for rescuing colonists. Um, and so all that stuff is signaled to the, the tutor, and uh, it, it shuffles all the lessons around and, and, and figures out how much you want to relax, how much you don't want to see a message. Uh, and then if there's a message that's higher priority than everything else and, and higher priority than your desire to relax, then uh, it will show you that message. Um, so it's a lot going on behind the screens for the ultimate purpose of not having things not happen in the game, uh, which is kind of, uh, kind of funny. But uh, you're basically trying to avoid like overwhelming people. You're trying to avoid showing people things they already know. And you're also trying to avoid people missing things. Like sometimes people will just click a message away for for whatever reason. And then I've I've seen them in play test get frustrated later because they didn't they didn't retain the the lesson and then missing it later caused them pain. So um, now like if you don't prove that you've learned something by doing it to some degree, like within you know, 10 minutes or something after the message shows up, then the tutor will put it back on the queue and, and try again until it's until you've done the, the action a couple of times. And it's like, all right, uh, you know, this player obviously gets this. Um, and all this is now retained between games as opposed to it resetting every time you start a new game like last time. So hopefully people won't have to turn the, the tutor off um, co constantly. And uh, so yeah, so the uh, the last piece that I just want to talk about a little bit is uh, the modding support. Um, this has really been largely a behind the scenes thing where I've been taking things out of uh, hard coded content uh, and uh, turning them into XML files that people can modify. Uh, and the, the game currently ships with a bunch of XML in the mods folder. Um, however, mod support is not yet complete. Um, you know, you can't actually switch between mods yet. Uh, not everything can be defined, uh, but you know, it's getting there. It's sort of, it's sort of halfway. Uh, there is an in-game mod editor actually, um, which currently only supports sound and, and hair definitions. Um, uh, but with this system, you can uh, actually modify things while you're playing the game. And this is originally designed on uh, Alistair, the uh, audio uh, expert's uh, request. Um, so that he could work on the sound, set their parameters uh, while the game is running. Um, because, you know, a sound isn't just the sound file, it's also all the parameters in terms of, you know, does it, uh, you know, get quieter as you zoom out and how much, uh, you know, or even like, is there a filter on it that changes parameters while you zoom out? Um, you know, you can have a low pass filter which makes the sound more muffled as you're more distant from it. Uh, and there's, there's like hundreds of combinations of, of this that, that you can make. Um, so yeah, I really encourage people to just take a look at this and play with it a bit. Uh, it'll be future releases when modding is really, really coming into its own. And I think we're, we're hopefully going to see some, some interesting content. Uh, and I, I certainly want to because, um, you know, I want to see what people are going to come up with. Um, so yeah, that's mostly it. Uh, and uh, I guess the final thing is uh, some of the sexy new menu art that we have here. This is going to get animated in the future, but thanks to Ricardo Tome for uh, pulling off some of these backgrounds and Rapunzel did a new logo. And uh, um, we got some nice new uh, storyteller graphics, which aren't in the game itself yet, but I'm, I'm going to put in there just to make sure that you don't forget who is screwing with you uh, or being nice to you in this case. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys like it. Uh, that's Alpha 1 of RimWorld. Uh, check the game out at rimworldgame.com and... Um, I will uh, see you guys next time.